Hello and welcome back to Elevation Niche. I'm Desmond O'Neill. All right. And today we are going to be continuing from our last video. I was making some allusion as to why we only attracting narcissistic people in our lives. And we are going to get into it right, right now. All right. So. Let's get let's 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 get into it today. Why are, does it seem as if we are only attracting narcissistic people in our lives? Let's get into it. Now, imagine you sitting down, you and your friends, maybe it might be your brothers, your sisters, or school friends, you all sit down uh, having some kombucha. Or you might be having a nice little um, coffee lime. You know, you and your friends, you're having a nice little coffee lime. And the talk ends up coming around to relationships. And you are asking yourself, but really and truly, why is it am I only attracting these type of people in my life? Why? I leave one relationship. I know exactly what to stay away from and as soon as i get myself together i'm ready for another relationship i find myself right back in to that what i say i am not getting back into hmm. it come like growing up in an abusive home and you tell yourself i would not be an abuser or I would not allow myself to be abused, and then you end up right inside of an abusive relationship yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why does that happen to us? So what is our problem? Well, I'm glad that you have tuned in to Elevation Niche. I want you to please like and subscribe to the channel. I want you to click a little notification bell, and I want you to, to leave a comment. Yeah. Uh, comment tell me more down down below yeah if you want to know a little bit more about the narcissist why you are ending up there what are some of the things about narcissists i want you to, to just just type in tell me more right at the bottom and we're gonna get right into it all right so let's get into some reasons why you yourself always ending up inside of a narcissistic relationship now this is something that i have I've, I've been through i mean i'm married now but i've been through a situation like this and it took me a long while even as i am married right now i'm trying to figure out what happened what was the what was was going on all right what was going on and that's by doing some research, by listening to a lot of psychologists, um, listening to a lot of people who deal with relationship dynamics and personality dynamics, especially, all right, I've put together a nice little package information. And if you want to know more about that, just check the link in the description. All right. So let's get into why it is that we only attracting narcissistic people in our lives and the first reason is you are an empathy and compassion magnet yeah i want you to understand that the problem is not really you you know it is good that you have a heart and it is good that you have compassion and that is something to be cherished i want you to know that it is not something bad no matter what movies you look like with people that are on that are able to divorce themselves from feelings it is good that you have feelings it is good that you can empathize with others it is good that you can have compassion it is good that you can feel sorry it is good that you can change it is good that 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 you can even feel sorry for yourself and say hey i need to do better i have to do better and you can put the necessary work in to change yourself so having empathy and compassion is good but here's what you are a magnet for the narcissist because they they 
hunger and thirst for that empathy and compassion are like drugs for the narcissist it is called the narcissistic supply right and and some of us are uh because of our high levels of empathy and compassion narcissists are drawn to you like like a magnet they are drawn to you like a magnet highly empathetic and compassionate individuals often attract narcissists because they tend to be nurturing and patient narcissists seek out people who will prioritize their needs and tolerate their behavior making empathetic people prime targets so the first thing is that you are not really the the, the issue here right you're not really the issue as i said it is good to have empathy it is good to have compassion but the other side of it is that these individuals the narcissists they can sniff you out they can sniff you out it's like a snake with 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 heat sensing lens they can they can they can they can sense you out and they will attract themselves to you and the narcissist has three major con, uh, major things that set them apart from everybody else it is so easy i did not know this before but i am telling you about it now it is so easy to spot them right now that it, it is no joke three major things number one love bombing the minute that they meet you they they, they make you feel like you use the stars the moon and the entire universe and they they have been waiting their whole lives for you and they cannot survive without you right and don't you ever believe for one minute that the words that are coming out of their mouth is true don't believe it because a narcissist all narcissists are liars they have no real empathy you see what they want is your empathy to make themselves feel good what they want is your compassion to make themselves feel good they don't have that built in on the inside i could not wrap my mind about around that at all but this is the reality of the situation right narcissists are like like vampires and if you have really been of recognize that you are in a narcissistic relationship you recognize that they suck your energy being around them is tiresome you always trying to block an argument you're always trying to to, to block a, a, a disagreement you are walking about on eggshell you have to go through your words three four five times in your mind before you can decide to say what you want to say that is not how we are supposed to live and that is not what god wants in store or has in store for you all right so as an as as, as so let's just talk about the different things that a narcissist bring to the table number one they love bomb you right they say all manner of things to get you hooked in then the, the second thing is the manipulation they begin to manipulate you into either doing things for them getting this or that for them and they make you feel guilty the minute that you decide to put up a boundary put up a wall or say you're not going to do it so there is high levels of manipulation there's also what is called gaslighting in terms of the they make it look they change your perception of reality and their perception of reality is the only thing that matters once they can control the narrative once they can control the perception of reality trust me you are going to be questioning your own sanity they will tell you the sky is green and you look it up and seeing it blue and after a while you will actually say that the sky is green they are that good you've got to be careful and then the final part of this whole song and dance is discarding they discard you either they lock you off they're not talking to you again you find that there's a long long period of of silence um it's as if you want to know what's going on you're asking yourself but I, we was good yesterday we was good up to last night we was good this morning what happened and you are constantly checking yourself checking yourself checking yourself and if any of us are in a romantic relationship that is hell to pay because 
all of a sudden you're texting and everything good you're talking to each other you're messaging and then all of a sudden he or she drops off the planet they're not messaging you anymore they're not talking to you anymore it's the discard phase and then you behind them like a little puppy dog and you're wondering why 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 talk to me is it something that i did is it something let me know let me know let me know and then after a while they reel you back in and the process starts all over again you see that hot and cold right that hot and cold one minute they're hot one minute they're cold a constant in and out that draws you in into what is called a trauma bond stay tuned to my next video we're going to be talking about trauma bonds and why it is <laughs> something i i don't know i recall that from the devil all right we're going to be talking about trauma bonds and how to get out of a trauma bond all right so those are the three things that a narcissist bring one love bombing two manipulation and gaslighting and three discarding phase that's it that's the whole bag of tricks and you have to be aware all right so you are a uh, empathy and compassion magnet for these individuals the second thing or the second reason why you are only attracting narcissistic people in your life is because of unresolved childhood trauma unresolved childhood trauma it will shock you how much of why we do what we do stems from our childhood it will shock you all right stems from your childhood as a matter of fact it's called developmental psychology and if you get into developmental psychology you will learn so much about yourself so a good way is to just take some time out talk to a therapist talk to a psychologist and 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 get him to resolving some of your childhood traumas people who experience childhood trauma especially in environments where they were required to cater to a parent's emotional needs may subconsciously seek out familiar dynamics they can lead to attracting narcissists right so trying to to uh cater to your parents emotional need your parents didn't know we didn't have all this information when we were growing up your parents don't know better and so as a child you subconsciously you subconsciously trying to cater to your parents emotional needs right and as you grow now you end up now in a familiar dynamic now as i said being compassionate and having empathy you know feeling sorry for somebody or wanting to help have that natural urge to help nothing is wrong with that but the narcissists they play heavily on that they sort of suck that out of you as a matter of fact um the the, the cycle after they discard you and they want to start back the love bombing that cycle is called hoovering right like like the vacuum cleaner they they suck you back in by beginning the love bombing phase and it sounds similar it sounds something like this oh my god i'm so sorry i didn't know that i was being that way to you i i, I want to change i want to do better all right because you know that i love you so much you are the moon the stars all the planets and the people in between lies lies and more lies they cannot feel empathy. They cannot feel love. They just want this, the, 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 uh, the, what is called the narcissistic supply. They just want you to be, to, to put them up on a pedestal one more time, worship at their feet and bow down, give them your money, your bank account, your life, your soul, your dreams, everything at the end of the day you are ending up with nothing you will be, just be a shell of yourself so you need to get out so unresolved childhood trauma right can lead to attractive narcissists who mimic those early toxic relationships right so yeah it's a it's a it's, it's a real thing you need to get out of that and the major thing the major thing and of course my last point 
into why you are only attracting narcissistic people in your life is because of lack of strong boundaries. Because you are fearful of being rejected. So not only does the narcissistic narcissist fear rejection, the empath also fears rejection and that goes into something called codependency yeah where you 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 doing something to to to, to get back that that uh emotional uh bolstering like you know you do something and somebody say hey well done boy that's a good job oh that was real good that, that was, so, some of us empaths we, we live for that not that anything is wrong with that i think that you ought to give credit where credit is due right and I, I i believe in that you you know um the bible even tells us that the workman is worthy of his hire so you ought to commend people for what they do and, and tell them hey that was a job well done but when you are in a codependent relationship as most empaths are, are codependent what happens is that you you fear being rejected by the narcissists and so you have boundaries or non-negotiables or some things that you are not supposed you it, it make up part of your credo uh, part of who you are you tell yourself hey i am not going out late after 10 o'clock in the night i must be in my bed because i have to be up by six in the morning to get the morning train but for some reason the narcissist has you out 10 11 12 o'clock and you know you need to get your night's rest and you want to go and, and you're telling them no but they're making you feel so bad that how could you leave me at a time like this i'm pouring out my heart to you i'm pouring out my soul to you don't you care about me and you see how it, it, it's reversed now the narcissists are masters at reversing it's like judo you you throw a punch and they reverse that back on you so you have to be well aware as to what is taking place and so if you do not have strong boundaries if you are not if you're a person that that um is unable to put up boundaries and establish them and for for some men this is difficult because women will tend to to, to to play that that empathy card on you right don't you care about me anymore don't you care about my feelings don't you care what happens to me early early in the relationship they might be asking for money or a place to stay or their, their grandmother died and they need money for the funeral early early in the relationship a month in past yet and you telling yourself, nah, boy, but something wrong. But they want to make it seem as if you are the worst thing if you decide not to give them money or not to allow them to sleep over or not to allow them. And men be, get sucker punched with that a lot, right? So once you don't have strong boundaries, you are continuously going to attract the narcissist. Individuals who struggle to set or enforce personal boundaries may attract narcissists who exploit this vulnerability. Yeah, we talk about that. A lack of clear boundaries can signal to a narcissist that they can control and manipulate the person without much resistance. So you see, they want to have you like a puppet on a string. And they want to keep manipulating you and have you doing their every bid all right as i say this is not a male thing this is not a female thing this is a human condition because you have male narcissists you have female narcissists you have the communal narcissists you have the the overt narcissists and then you have the covert narcissists yeah all different types of narcissists that have outside there right and the covert narcissists are the, the 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 dangerous ones because get this some of them don't know that they're narcissistic they tend to look normal and operate normal but there are some triggers that there's some things that trigger that narcissistic relationship and you see boundaries that's number one that's number one 
from the time you put up your boundaries there they they show all types of easy fits right all types of fits are there they go they're gonna throw it in there all right so those are the three reasons why we find ourselves in narcissistic relationship number one um empathy and compassion right we are an empathy and compassion magnet number two unresolved childhood trauma and number three lack of strong boundaries all right and once you have all these three running as it normally does uh, in an individual you are going to be a prime target to a narcissist and you're going to find yourself in a narcissistic relationship and you need to get out how you need to get out i glad you asked we have some resources that are right down there in the description i want you to click on it and i want you to go in and see all right because just as i was able to get out i want you to be able to get out of a narcissistic relationship as well and let me tell you the best thing to do sometimes it's hard especially if you have emotional financial and other types of investments into this relationship listen to me it doesn't matter how much money you put out there it doesn't matter how much of yourself and your emotions you put out there you are more important than money and all of these uh tangible things you are more important all right and i want you sir and i want you ma'am to get out get out get out get out now sometimes it's very difficult and as we produce more of these types of videos uh, we're going to help you if you have children attached if the person is one of those violent types of narcissists how to plan before you leave all right how not to notify people how to trace your steps how to get things on record so if it ever ends up in the court you have yourself well documented yeah real things real thing people all right so until we meet again this is desmond o'neill and i am going to be talking next about trauma bonds and why although you know the person playing you you know very well that this person manipulating you you know this person gaslighting you but for some reason you can't break free of that relationship <sighs> Stay tuned for the next video. Like and subscribe. Check the link in the description. And for more resources on how to go about getting out of a narcissistic relationship. Take care, everybody.